Stand by 30 seconds. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, Serious Security Seminar. Uh, today, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Yang He Kwan. Uh, Yang He is a uh, PhD student in the Department of Computer Science at Purdue. Uh, his research interests include, uh, but not limited to, uh, dynamic and static uh, binary program analysis, reverse engineering, uh, and uh, system security. And he's focusing on uh, solving security and debugging problems using dynamic uh, binary analysis, translation, and transformation techniques. Uh, he's a recipient of the uh, SIGSOFT Distinguished Paper Award and the Best Paper Award from uh, ASE 2013, that is the Conference on Automated Software Engineering. Hello. Uh Thanks for attending this talk. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, P2C, understanding of data files via on the fly transformation from producer uh, to consumer execution. This work uh, is a joint work with SRI International and Cisco Systems and uh, was presented at NDSS this year. And uh, let me start with a simple question uh, What is the program and what they do? So it's simple and it's an uh, easy question. You can find the answers from the slide very quickly. So the program just take inputs and process it and outputs. And the computer programs generate a lot of outputs. And some of them stored onto the files. And some of them are uh, sent out to uh, other computers through the networks. But here is the question. Uh, do we really know what kind of data are stored to or uh, send out to the other computers? Uh, the answer is, unfortunately, no. Uh, for example, uh, many of you see uh, this kind of windows uh, in many cases. That is, when some program crashed, they say that they're going to send some information. They're going to collect some information and send uh, this to uh, their servers to investigate the crash later. But do we really know what kind of data they uh, really collect? Uh, sure, no. So the understanding uh, unknown data files or network messages is a prominent security challenge. And uh, let me give you a concrete example. So a user downloads and installs some few freeware programs and uses it uh, for a while. And weeks later, he found some mysterious binary files in his computer. And uh, sure, intuitively, these uh, mysterious binary files, you can think of uh, they are generated by this one of the prior programs, but you don't know really uh, who created these files. So without audit logging and monitoring systems, it's difficult to answer these following two questions. First, who create these files, or uh, whether uh, do they contain actual private data, for example, uh, pri personal profile, or content list, or keystroke that you don't want to uh, share. And again, uh, these uh, mysterious, mysterious binary files are just binary. So without knowing the uh, data structures in the files, if you can just open these files on the hex editors, all you can see is just sequence of the hex. So you don't really uh, have chance to understand the data files. Uh, this problem is actually uh, has been there for a long time. So there are many input format reverse engineering techniques uh, based on consumer programs, uh, such as uh, prospect and chimney and reward. And here, uh, I want to first define consumer programs and the producer programs. Consumer programs are the programs that read and understand the input files. Producer programs are the programs that generate such uh, input files. So the key idea behind 
uh, the input format reverse engineering techniques is that they monitor the execution of consumer programs and they analyze the execution to understand how the files or messages are parsed in the uh, consumer program. So let me give you an example. We have a file that we want to analyze uh, on the left side and the program, the consumer program that read and understand the file on the right side. So it, the consumer program first uh, call app read to read a field from a file. The field uh, contains a string James here. And later, uh, the program calls string copy function and one of the parameter is the buffer we just read from the file. So at this point, we know that the buffer actually a string type. And then we propagate back this information uh, to the file field. So at this point, we know that the file field, uh, the field from the file is a, a string type. So this is how the uh, existing input format reverse engineering technique works. But here we have the problem because they require uh, the consumer programs. But unfortunately, um, we don't have uh, consumer programs in many cases in practice. So what if we don't have the consumer programs and we only have the producer program? Let me give you an example. And uh, in case of the botnet command and control protocol, uh, we don't have consumer program on the victim machine. So we only have a producer program on the victim machine. And the producer collects some of your data and they generate some unknown network messages and send to the attacker's machine. The consumer program that can read and understand the network message uh, uh, exists on the attacker's machine. Unfortunately, we don't have the access to the attacker's machine. So the problem here really comes down to how to understand uh, such unknown network messages without having consumer uh, programs. Uh, before I uh, talk about the uh, P2C program, I want to first uh, talk about an observation that motivated our work. So a paper published in FSC 2011 uh, the title is Checking Complements of a Producer and a Consumer. Uh, they propose a, an observation that a producer and consumer are symmetric. Uh, they use this observation to show that the correctness of the producer can be verified by checking its conformance to the corresponding consumer. Basically, what it means is uh, if you want to check the correctness of the producer, you can just monitor the execution of the consumer and just looking for how it accurately follows the corresponding consumer's logic. If they are matched, then we can say uh, we don't have the bug. Here, uh, let me give you an example here. So we have a pair of producer and consumer program. And the producer, uh, depending on the predicate outcome at line number two, uh, it may generate just one field output or three field output. So it may generate just boolean or a boolean double boolean. And as you can see, the consumer uh, follows the exact same rule. Uh, at line number eight, uh, it first read the first field, which is boolean, and then uh, it de determine uh, whether it goes to read two more fields or not. So as you can see, these two uh, consumer producer uh, follow the same rule, which, which means that uh, they are correct and there is no bug. But here, uh, still, they require a set of producer and consumer. And uh, we have, uh, uh, in, in our uh, setting, we don't have the uh, consumer. But this work actually uh, inspired us to come up with a new idea, which is how about just run the producer to create consumer if we uh, don't have the consumer available. And now we try to run the program uh, and try to transform the producer execution to consumer execution. And now we encounter a huge problem, which is we don't know how to run these programs. So as you can uh, imagine, uh, just executing the producer, just executing a program without proper input, it may just run and do something little sim simple and just quit. And uh, sure, they don't create a file which we want to analyze it. And as you can see, I, uh, I have a picture 
of a simple abstraction of the program. And the program has a bunch of functions. And uh, depending on the input, it may execute few functions and just quit. In here, uh, I mark red box as one that executed. And it shows that uh, without the proper input, we just execute one piece of code. And it does not execute the produce file function, which uh, we want to analyze. And this is actually a fundamental pro problem of uh, dynamic analysis, which is a coverage problem. So here is the big question, how we solve this problem. Uh, anyone can suggest? <laughs> so you may think of. Um, Try to find like a lot of different inputs to drive the execution, something like that. All right. So this is actually a huge problem and is really so difficult to solve. And uh, there are some static analysis tool try to find uh, all kinds of inputs so that they execute all kinds of the program code, but they are not that successful in practice. So here. Uh, our earlier tool comes to the rescue. Uh, we, have, we have been developed a first execution engine called XForce. And the XForce uh, can explore all the possible paths uh, without inputs. And during the execution, uh, during, uh, its, during its exploration of the all possible paths, it generates random inputs on demand. And also, uh, it recovers from any faults during the execution. So now, as you can see, uh, thanks to the experts, we can execute all kinds of the functions without requiring any inputs. All right. Uh, now I'm going to introduce uh, the basic idea of the P2C. Here we have uh, a known message or a file that we want to analyze and a set of potential producers. So our setting is we, ha we have some messages or files that we want to analyze, but we don't know. And it is previously generated. So we actually don't know whether uh, which program is generated. And the potential producer it should not, I mean, it, it does not need to be just one program. We can have set of pro programs that, uh, as I showed the uh, first example, uh, it could be a few uh, freeware programs. And then we feed uh, the potential producer to the exports. And during exports, explore all the execution paths. Uh, it tried to find uh, the execution paths that contain file open for write operation, which essentially means produce executions. And uh, with these producer, producer executions, and we feed the producer executions and the unknown file or message we want to understand to the P2C. And P2C uh, 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 generate transformed consumer execution. Once we have the uh, transformed consumer execution, we can just use the existing 10 analysis tools to understand uh, the file format as well as the uh, uh, type information of each field in the file. So here, uh, I want to point out that the biggest difference between uh, our work and all the previous work is that we just directly work on the potential producer programs, and we don't require any consumers and any input to drive uh, even the producer executions. Uh, all right. So let me explain uh, some uh, how the P2C actually works in detail. Here, uh, we have uh, a known binary file we want to analyze. As you can see, it's, uh, it kind of contains some uh, five integer at the beginning, and the next two fields contains strings and uh, integer again. And this is actually how this file is generated. We have a producer program. It looks a little bit complex. So I'm going to explain it line by line. So first, uh, first line, uh, it tried to open a file, which is uh, essentially the unknown file. And line number two, uh, it calculates uh, the account number. And uh, line number three, it assigns some uh, constant value. 
And at line number four, it tried to write the, uh, uh, the, the magic variable. The magic variable is actually uh, the, uh, uh, the signature of the file is, uh, as it, uh, if, if you think about like P files, at the very beginning of the P file is always MZ, which is constant. It's telling that this file is a, a certain type. And at line number five, it tried to write the account number that is actually calculated at line number two. And line number six to eight also try to calculate uh, some numbers and the strings. And at line number nine, it tried to write the uh, size of the header. And line number 10 is just storing this, the header. And But please see that the uh, size of that F write operation is stored uh, right before uh, at line number nine. And uh, line number 11, we have a loop. And the loop depends on the account number. And it will uh, store number of account structures at the end. So this file is actually constructed. The first, it has a signature. And the second is uh, uh, the number of account structures in this file. And the third field is the size of the header. All right, but the problem here is uh, we don't really know how to run the producer, so we use XForce uh, to run the producer execution. But uh, the first execution does not really generate the same unknown data file. That is, since the XForce does not take any inputs, it, gener uh, it, it just randomly generates uh, the uh, inputs on demand. For example, at line number two, instead of uh, calculating the account number, uh, it generate just random number two and just assign it. And line number six, seven, eight, uh, it happens also the same way. Uh, line number six, it generate a random string and assign it to the uh, name field of the header structure. And line number seven, it also generate a random number two and assign it. So this is actually uh, the file generated by the first execution. As you can see, these two unknown file and file generated by the first execution are different. And I marked a different field of uh, between two files uh, with the red boxes. So uh, as you can see, it has uh, two field uh, the first field are the same because it's just constant, and this next field, the number of account, is different, and the size of header is also different. And there's uh, strings are also different in header structures and account structures too. In here, the biggest problem is actually uh, we have different size of the header. Because that size of the header is used at line number 10 to store uh, the header, and it determines the size of the header in the file, uh, we will have all uh, uh, like misaligned account, uh, mis misaligned account structures in uh, these outcomes. So if we use uh, pain analysis to analyze that first execution to understand the unknown file, all the type information we get uh, right after the header, uh, including some of the field in the header, uh, are incorrect. And also we can see that the file generated by the first execution is a little bit smaller than uh, a known file. So the last few field in the unknown file does not really have the corresponding part in the file generated by the first execution. So even uh, again, even if we just use the pain analysis to an uh, analyze uh, the first execution, uh, we don't have no idea how to uh, match this uh, last few field in the unknown file. So <clears throat> now I'm going to talk about how we uh, solve this problem. Uh, we, have, uh, we have the producer prog program on the left side and the consumer program on the right side. The basic idea of the P2C is we try to find all the right operation and try to transform it into the symmetric read operation. So uh, let's begin from the first uh, line. And 
uh, when the producer try to open a file to write something, uh, we transform it to the symmetric read operation, which is f open uh, for read. And the file that this f open function will read is not the file generated by the first execution. Uh, it's the file that we want to analyze. So it's going to open the unknown file and see uh, what happens uh, next. And it executes uh, line number two and line number three. Uh, since we are using the X first to drive this execution, at line number two, instead of calculating the account number, uh, we assign random variable, random, random number uh, two. And uh, line number three is just constant, so it doesn't change. And at line number four, instead of writing uh, something to the file, we do a symmetric read operation. So it read the first field uh, from the unknown file. And since the first field is just constant, it doesn't really matter. And at line number five, we do also the symmetric read operation. And uh, now it read the account number. So let's see that uh, at line number two, we actually assign a random number two. But here, we read the second field of the unknown file. And then the account number at right after the line number five is uh, becoming a value five. So this is actually correcting the program state to drive this consumer execution correctly. So let's see uh, what this actually affect to the rest of the execution. After that, it also executes uh, line number six, seven, eight. And during the execution, it generates some random values and assign it, uh, like uh, some random strings to the header name and random number to the account number two. And at line number uh, nine, uh, we also do the symmetric read operation. And now it reads the size uh, variable. And uh, this symmetric operation will read the third field of the uh, unknown file. Uh, since we just generate the random values uh, during line number six, seven, eight, uh, the size is actually calculated uh, hex, hex number A. But this is incorrect because in the unknown file, uh, the real size of that header is 15. So at the line number 9, the symmetric read operation will correct this problem. So it read the third field, which is 15, and assign it to the size variable. And line number 10, we also do the symmetric read. And now we try to read the header. And since we have corrected the size variable at line number 9, now we can uh, now the uh, consumer transformed consumer execution can correctly read the uh, header. And after that, we have a loop, and the number of iteration of this loop depends on the account number. And let's see that uh, first the account number initially has the random number two, but at line number five we have uh, we did a symmetric read and correct the account number. And that actually propagated to the line number 11. So we have now a correct number of loop. And then uh, line number 12, uh, we're going to iterate it and read uh, the account structures. Uh, this is a kind of nice example that uh, we successfully transform a producer execution to consumer execution. At the end of this execution, uh, we, are, uh, we can see that uh, all the unknown files are actually consumed, and we reach the end of the file point of the unknown file. So uh, any questions so far? All right, um, but the life is not that easy, so sure, there are many practical challenges. Uh, we have observed many uh, complex programs. And here, uh, we identify a bunch of programs and formulate it as a one problem. So we found a lot of programs, actually. Uh, there are some, so many cases that symmetric read operation uh, do not really help. That is, even though we do the symmetric read operation to the every uh, write operation, uh, it does not help to uh, drive the execution correctly. This is because uh, 
the symmetric read, uh, let's say that there are two symmetric read operations. They are actually related, but they, since they do not have explicit dependence, it is really, really difficult to uh, identify. So let me give you an example. We have a producer program here on the left side and uh, the transformed consumer program on the right side. Let's look at the uh, producer program first. It first uh, opened the files and tried to calculate uh, the length of the string at line number three. And it stores the length of the string to, the, uh, to a variable. And at line number five, it's going to store but the problem here is at line number six, when it stores the buffer contents, it recalculate the size of the uh, string again. So just for human, just looking at this code, you can see that, oh yeah, sure, this first store the length of the string and then store the string according to the code. But, the, but for the program, it is kind of difficult to uh, come up with this idea because they don't have uh, explicit dependence between line number five or six. So let's see what happens when we apply symmetric read operation in this program. So the consumer program follows the same uh, sequence. Uh, at line number one is same, and at line number three, uh, it tried to calculate the length of the string. But since we use the first execution, the buffer contents is not the correct one. It just have random buffer. So sure, the length is incorrect. But at line number five, uh, since it tried to read uh, the length of the buffer from the unknown file, it's going to correct that uh, variable at line number five. But this correction does not help at line number six because, uh, because at line number six, at the uh, symmetric read operation, it's going to recalculate the length of the string using string length with the buffer. So at line number six, uh, it will read different uh, number of bytes, which is incorrect. And that actually makes all the uh, next symmetric read operation incorrect. So. Uh, does anyone can uh, can anyone suggest how to solve this problem? All right. So to solve this problem, um, we try to find uh, the original definition of the variables, and when we need to correct the variable from the unknown file. Uh, we try to propagate, uh, uh, try to correct the original definition of the variables and uh, make it like make it propagate it naturally. So we call this uh, finding the original definition and correct the first definition of the variable uh, patching, and we uh, run the program like several times and during the execution of the. Uh, that iterative execution, uh, we check the consistency among the patches. And when the uh, patches are inconsistent between executions, uh, we uh, identify that it actually indicates the presence of unexposed field correlation. Then uh, if that happens, we try to uh, backtrack to the last patches and then try a different values until uh, we don't have uh, uh, inconsistent patches. So this is a little bit uh, kind of more uh, tricky part. So if you're interested and you can refer the uh, paper, uh, we have the algorithms and the examples uh, to uh, these unexposed co field correlations. And uh, now I'm going to show uh, how we evaluate uh, the P2C programs. All right, uh, we have evaluated this system with uh, nine programs, uh, five programs generate files, and four programs uh, generate network messages. <coughs> and as you can see, the program size varies uh, from really small and a little bit large, like two megabytes, 
uh, this program size essentially uh, does not include all the library, dynamic library uh, codes. So actually, when it loads in onto the uh, memory, is uh, way more bigger than this one. And the unknown file size we want to analyze is uh, vary from a uh, few bytes to a uh, few megabytes. And we have measured a number of iterations. And we have two, uh, two parts. Uh, the first one is match it and unmatch it. This is the case that uh, the matched case is actually if we can pick a right function in the right program, then how many iterations we need to do to type all the uh, field in the file. And the unmatched part is we may pick a wrong program, or even if we pick the correct program, there are a bunch of functions that has right operation. So let's say uh, we just pick uh, wrong program and wrong functions. Then how many iterations we need to do to know that this will not going to help us? So as you can see, uh, the match it part, uh, when it's uh, finished it successfully, uh, is usually uh, 10 times or 20 times, uh, less, always less than 50 times. And the match it part is uh, usually zero because uh, you can imagine that most of the files or most of net, uh, network messages, they have their signatures, like constant number, uh, telling that this message is uh, this type. And when we uh, compare or try to uh, execute, and when we encounter those kind of things, and then uh, we, we can uh, usually just immediately uh, fail to transform the execution. So this is mostly just zero, means that at the first execution, we immediately know that this function will not help us. And the number of typed field or an out of uh, number of field means uh, how many fields we can accurately type in the unknown data file or network messages. And the elapsed time uh, means uh, just running time of our uh, system. And this running time actually include all the iterations we have. So just running one execution actually doesn't uh, take a lot of time. And the coverage and the path, number of paths explored is uh, like how many instructions are covered by uh, the first execution experts engine and the, the number of paths explored by the experts engine too. And as you can see, uh, we, we can cover like plenty of the instructions and plenty of paths that can uh, identify uh, the producer executions. And here, uh, let me explain a few case studies we have gone through. Uh, we have a steganography program that actually embed a secret text in the image by changing the least significant bit of the uh, each pixel in the image. So here, uh, our setting is we have an image that potentially or not uh, potentially contain a hidden message or not. So we don't know whether this is actually containing a text message or not. And by just looking at, it's really difficult to tell because uh, even though the image contains the secret image, it does not really change a lot. It just changed the least significant bit. So, uh, all right, and uh, and also we have some set of potential programs. We don't know uh, what kind of program exactly can inject uh, the hidden message to the image. So we have set of programs that may inject or not. So we uh, use these two, uh, one image file and set of uh, programs and feed them to the P2C and whether it can uh, generate a transformed consumer execution or not. Here, actually, uh, we can have two different outcomes. If that image has the uh, secret message, then, uh, all right, uh, if that image has the secret image and if one of the potential producer actually can inject that secret image to the image, uh, secret text to the image, then uh, we can, we will get the 
correct transformed consumer execution. Otherwise, uh, we, we are not able to transform the producer executions to the consumer execution. And once we get uh, the transformed consumer execution, we can simply uh, apply the Tain analysis techniques to understand, uh, like first, what kind of texts are actually hidden, or and uh, how they hide uh, the text, and uh, the uh, uh, their internal structures and the uh, types of the internal structures. All right. So if uh, there is a hidden messages here, uh, our P2C to P2C tool can identify these hidden images with uh, data structures the uh, Mario actually use, as well as how they embed uh, the individual field type information. And if this image is just benign, it doesn't have the uh, secret text, then we are not able to uh, drive, uh, transform the consumer execu uh, produce execution to the consumer execution. So even though we are not sure whether the image contain a hidden message or not, we are still, uh, we can still uh, get meaningful information out of the uh, P2C. And here, uh, another uh, case study. Uh, we use the Zbot. Uh, which is a uh, malware that communicate uh, through the networks, and it generates different messages depending on the uh, situation. For example, uh, sometimes it generate it try to send uh, local information to other servers, and sometimes it just wait and doing nothing. So our goal is to understand previously generated message by this program, and it's already sent to other uh, computers. So we have, uh, we encounter the prop, uh, right, uh, here we have two consecutive messages that we want to analyze. And uh, we, ha we encounter a problem that the program actually does not generate messages without input. So when I try to just execute this program, this program just run and quit doing nothing. So we use experts to try to, uh, try to make this program generate something. And uh, we, 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 uh, we identify that it actually generates something, but it generates different messages. So here, uh, we have unknown messages we want to analyze, and the messages are generated by the first execution. And I marked different part with the red boxes. And uh, as you can see, all the strings are different, and we have one integer. Uh, difference between these two messages. So we uh, run the P2C to generate a idea consumer execution, and this gives us two information. That is, first, the first message actually contains the size of the second message. As you can see, uh, the 25 actually meaning that the whole uh, length of the second message. And the second message contains computer name, and the uh, uh, operating system version information, and one uh, key values from the registry key. So uh, we type this information uh, by taining all the uh, standard Windows API. So after we run uh, P2C, this is kind of what we uh, get out of the program. And uh, so we have observed uh, some few interesting uh, things uh, during our evaluation. Uh, first of all, uh, it's, it was actually quite interesting that the number of iteration to find correct transformation is not that large. Because when I uh, started this project, I was thinking that it may be take a bunch of, bunch of times. It may run forever. But in most cases, uh, the program dependencies are already exposed, and we don't see a lot of uh, unexposed field correlations. And the second, uh, we can precisely identify all the field in the given files or messages, uh, with few exceptions. First, uh, one program called YAMD has uh, 
has a lot of floating point uh, instructions. And the network Morris WinPing, InfoJeep, uh, they have uh, some uh, non standard API uses, and the fields are tainted by these non standard APIs. But I want to point out that this uh, limitation is not actually from the P2C. These are just limitation of implementation of uh, Tain Analysis Engine. So we could improve Tain Analysis Engine to make it better. And third, we find, found out that uh, transformed consumer execution sometimes recognize more fields than some typical consumers. For example, uh, MP3 gain is a program that can uh, calculate something and inject new tag into the MP3 file. And one of the commercial uh, famous uh, MP, uh, tag reader, MP3 tag reader program, which is MP3 tag, cannot actually recognize this field. So I can say uh, sometimes it's even even though you have the uh, consumers it is better to transform the producer execution to consumer execution to understand what it actually generated. And uh, to conclude, uh, we have developed P2C, which is an output format reverse engineering tool. And uh, uh, we, it understands the structure and meaning of the unknown file or messages, and uh, we don't really require consumers and any inputs to drive the producer executions. We just take the producer programs and transform it to the consumer. We don't need inputs. And the key, key idea be, uh, behind this tool is uh, we transform a producer execution to the idea consumer execution. Sometimes it uh, recognizes more fear than typical cons consumers. And we uh, show that it is highly accurate and we don't need to know the exact producer, so you can just have set of producers. And uh, you don't even know uh, how to run uh, these programs, too. All right. So any uh, question? So does everybody get the idea?